Well, big doings there. Boston College knocks off Duke. Here we've got Indiana and Louisville. A couple of programs under new head coaches this year and a couple of teams looking to find out something about themselves today. And looking to get a signature win. Both these teams need this game. And really, the glass and turnovers are going to be a huge factor in this game. You have to take care of the ball, and you've got to go get it when it's up on the backboard. The Hoosiers 5-4 and four on the season. The Cardinals 5-2. and two. Outstanding crew. Ted Valentine, Mike Eads, Terry Weimer, the officials, and we are ready for basketball here at the Yum Center which as is packed as always Louisville and white and Indiana in visiting Crimson the Dr. Scholl's starting lineups in this game beginning with Louisville the same starting five that they have used Dang Adele as their leading scorer and a quick double team on Anish Mahmood Quentin Snyder shot the ball better in his last game than he has for most of the season he has really struggled shooting the ball for most of his senior season. Well, Quentin Snyder's a really important player for this Louisville team, but Indiana doing a really good job when the ball goes inside. They play that pack line defense under Archie Miller, and they don't always double the post, but their rotation out of that double was really good. Josh Newkirk with the shot clock down to seven. Aljami Durham with a baseline drive, feeds it off to Davis. Loose ball bounces to Morgan. He's got it rejected, and back come the Cardinals. Louisville is the best shot-blocking team in the country with Ray Spalding and Anas Mahmoud. Anas Mahmoud second in the country in block shots, but this is a long, athletic team that does not make anything easy around the rim. They average better than eight blocks per game, and they had 15 against Siena in a win earlier this week. Yeah, Mahmoud had... Almost 10. Yeah, he had nine, nine of them. Yep. Yep. He, almost, he wound up almost with a triple double. Nine blocks in addition to double figures in scoring and rebounding. That, that's an amazing stat. 17 points, 13 rebounds for Anas Mahmoud, another experienced player, another senior from Cairo, Egypt. Seven feet tall, 230 pounds, and there are the numbers. And that's apparently after interim head coach David Padgett really got on his case at halftime because he didn't like what he was seeing in the first half and whatever he said to him at halftime must have really worked in the second half. Well he's done a really good job Honest Mahmoud has of rebounding. 2-3 zone now for Louisville and Louisville will go man out of this at certain triggers if it goes into the high post they immediately go man which they're doing right now. So now they're in man to man. Shot clock running down on the Hoosiers again. Newkirk the kick. Durham starting his fourth consecutive game in the backcourt is fouled out on the perimeter. Well, what a situation inherited by David Padgett, who, of course, played at Louisville for three years, was on the staff the last three years, but after the FBI investigation and the subsequent firing of Rick Pitino, David Padgett takes over as the acting head coach. And uh, he told us he wakes up at about 3.30 in the morning and he just looks at the clock over and over and over until it's game time. Uh, as unusual a situation, Jay, as perhaps any coach has inherited in many, many years in the college game. Yeah, I don't think following a Hall of Fame coach in this fashion is anything anyone has ever prepared for, let alone this being your first head coaching opportunity. Dang Adele, everything but the finish. He is Louisville's leading scorer, 16 points per game. And Durham rejected at the other end by Spalding. Bounces out to Newkirk, and the Hoosiers are on the board. And from the sounds of it, we've got some folks who made the drive from Bloomington to watch the game here in Louisville. That was a really smart play by Deron Davis. Getting that ball after it was blocked off the backboard by Spalding and immediately looking out for an open step-in three by Newkirk. The two big guys collaborated, but Mahmoud has it knocked away by Davis. This will be a real test. Mahmoud with much more length, but Davis with much more strength. And Davis, a guy that has been a real focal point for Indiana. They want to get the ball inside to him. Whether it's man or zone, he needs to touch it. Good pass and a strong finish inside by Morgan who's been playing some great basketball lately for the Hoosiers just a fantastic hard roll to the basket by Jawan Morgan after setting that ball screen and Anas Mahmoud needs to get over there obviously a little quicker in rotation but that's the way you avoid a block shot just go and punch it and Jawan Morgan has been playing extraordinarily well over his last three games about 18 points a game seven rebounds a couple of blocks and shooting 65% from the field during that period. Indiana's already played a couple of league games this past week, and Morgan had 24-8 and eight against Michigan and then 15-10 and 10 against Iowa for the new head coach of the Hoosiers, Archie Miller. And of course, played at NC State, a great run the last six years at Dayton, has been an assistant at a number of places, including under his brother, Sean, 
at Arizona, and he takes over for Tom Crane this year. The Hoosiers are 5-4. and four. Remember, they lost that first game of the season to Indiana State, beaten at home by 21. So both of these coaches, both of these programs, still trying to, to establish what they are and learn what they are before we get too much deeper into the season. Well, obviously very different situations. Yeah. I mean, Indiana, Archie Miller is trying to establish his way of playing to a, a group of players that had been established in a different fashion. It's not a question of one being better than the other. It's just different. And this, Archie Miller coaches the game. He, he has a different view of basketball than Tom Crean did. So they're more, they're more a half-court oriented team. They're not as up and down as Indiana was last year. They want to play inside out a little bit more. They don't shoot as many threes. They don't shoot them as opportunistically in transition. And they play a, a different brand of defense. The pack line defense is, is much different as far as positioning is, is concerned. And it's, it can be for, for younger players pretty complicated. Shot clock at five. Newkirk for three. Off the back of the iron, and a great offensive rebound, and put back by Morgan. Well, there you can see why Jawan Morgan leads this team in rebounding and offensive rebounding, because he's physical. He's the best defender on this Indiana team, because he can switch every ball screen, he can guard multiple positions. But he's starting to exert himself on both ends of the floor now, and act like the best player on the floor. Great start for the Hoosiers on the road here in Louisville. Spalding trying to back Morgan down, and it's rejected by Davis. What a start by Deron Davis. And Durham is fouled at the other end. Archie Miller's got to love what he's seen in the first four minutes and change. When we come back, we'll get to know the interim head coach of the Louisville Cardinals, David Padgett, after this timeout. Finally, a tall head coach. Enough of the short guys. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. So David Padgett taking over as the interim head coach of the Louisville Cardinals and a guy with some Louisville in his background. He was a three-year starter, spent one year at Kansas, then transferred here, played three years, started three years here for the Cardinals, was the captain of a team that went to the Elite Eight in 2008, then moved to the staff eventually, director of basketball ops, assistant coach, and then one day before practice began was named the interim head coach. He's only 32 years of age. We asked him before the game, the first time you were alone with the players in the locker room, you started talking to them, what was the message? And he said he just wanted them to know before it became public because it was imminent that it would get out that he was the head coach so he starts into a speech and about 20 seconds in he says dang adele raises his hand as if he's in class and says uh coach are you the new head coach of the team and everybody else in the room knew it already except somehow david patchett said dang adele had no idea that that news was forthcoming and it probably was the best thing for Paget. it was an icebreaker it relaxed him you know, they're all in a very unusual situation together. And then, of course, Jay, he had to put a staff together, like, immediately. Yeah, I'm very fortunate in being able to hire a former head coach in Trent Johnson, who was a head coach at Nevada, Stanford, LSU, uh, TCU. I mean, a very established coach to be able to sit right next to him, one that he's known since he was in high school because he played with Trent Johnson's son in high school. What a rejection by Spalding. The third for Ray Spalding. Yeah. Deep one for Colin Hartman, and it'll go down for him. And that is the shooter's touch, and Colin Hartman makes such a big difference for this Indiana team because he can really stretch the floor, and he makes good decisions with the ball. The year senior missed last season with a knee injury, but back for one more go-around. And Archie Miller said before the game when we asked him about Hartman, he said he's great in the huddle, he's very vocal, pretty good on that double team right there too, but he's a guy who brings a lot of intangibles to this Hoosier team. Snyder misses wide right, Louisville is cold, and Indiana already has a double-digit lead here on the road. Well, neither one of these teams are very good three-point shooting teams percentage-wise. Indiana getting better because of the presence of Colin Hartman. Now with the elbow. And turns it over, got caught under the basket, and got himself in trouble. They left the floor to pass with nowhere to go. He's just about falling out of bounds. Snyder takes the bump and will head to the free throw line. Well, you really have to keep Quentin Snyder out of the lane, but Colin Hartman has had two different knee surgeries. He's been injured throughout his career at Indiana, but Indiana, before he got back from injury, did not have anybody that could consistently knock down that shot and really stretch a defense where a step or two off the three-point line, you've got to go out and guard him. 
you could see and a lot of things factor into that but the difference in the record for IU with Hartman in the lineup over the course of his career as opposed to being sidelined with injuries at the line for the Cardinals senior Quentin Snyder was one of three Louisville natives on this Cardinal team a couple of subs coming in for the Hoosiers Morgan is back and also checking in is Devonte Green the sophomore from North Babylon New York is Archie Miller starting to fine tune the rotation a little bit they've gotten Hartman back healthy Curtis Jones just announced he's going to transfer out of the program so they've got one less body in the backcourt his minutes had been diminishing lately but uh, those factors and a couple of others and it, it feels like Indiana's rotation is starting to come into focus well you put Devontae Green in the ball game as six man he's the best passer on this team is also really good with the ball off balance shot there by Green and back on the Cardinals in transition and that's what Louisville needs to get is some transition because if they're going to grind it out in the half court not a great half court execution team right now Dang Adele bangs down a three and Louisville back within five Adele not shooting the three well so far this season, just 20% coming into this game. Energy back in the building now with Louisville on a little mini 5-0 run. They've stepped up the defensive pressure. Indiana has been patient with the basketball, but they're getting down to the end of clocks, and their execution has been pretty good overall. An offensive foul stepping in to take the charge, Dwayne Sutton. Dwayne Sutton's a transfer from UNC Asheville and did a good job of stopping in the middle of the lane and coming getting back outside that charge circle. That is not easy to do. And I'm not sure he actually got there before Robert Johnson took off. You've got to give him a lot of credit for that, that was the that was by far the best defensive possession in the half court for Louisville. They played hard the whole 30 seconds. Sutton. Misses the three, and Newkirk down with the rebound for the Hoosiers. Now, it wasn't a bad shot, but Louisville cannot settle for jump shots. Good ball movement, and Hartman will miss the left-handed layup. Looks like he rushed it, expecting the shot to be challenged more than it was. Adele open again. And the offensive rebound to Spalding. Got it. It's a three-point game. Well, the glass is going to be such a big factor in this game. Because neither team is a great shooting team, you have to expect second shots. Morgan draws the double team and draws the foul as well. well. There's an example of Indiana trying to play inside out. Get the ball inside to whether it's Juwan Morgan or Deron Davis. Let them touch it and then play off of them. And Morgan go right into the chest and just got... Ray Spaulding off the floor and Spaulding when you're that long he's got like a 7-5 wingspan when you're that long and it's easy to say harder to do you have to be second to leave the floor you cannot leave the floor before the offensive player Mahmoud back in for Spaulding for Louisville Morgan was quoted earlier this year he said I was trying to be something I wasn't just was Taking a few too many outside shots. It was not getting underneath, inside, mucking it up, getting on the glass. And Archie Miller said ever since he started doing that, the numbers in all the different categories have gone up. Free throw attempts, assists, rebounding, steals, everything. Well, free throw inside. Free throw attempts is the big one. Yeah. You know, for him to be able to get to the free throw line six times a game, because he's a good free throw shooter, shoots almost 80%. And that's a that's a huge factor because he's far more efficient scoring around the basket and from the free throw line than he is. He can add a three point shot now and again, but that doesn't need to be a big part of his game. Both teams looking for a name value win, if you will, here today. Indiana's best win probably over Iowa, which they had earlier this week. Another offensive rebound for Morgan. Louisville lost their two so-called big name games to Purdue and Seton Hall. Lost by two to Seton Hall here, coming off a win over Siena. But both teams would love to rack up a win here in this one today. 19th time these two programs have met. And Indiana leads at 10-8 overall, but Louisville's won the last three in a row. Morgan for three. Louisville got caught on the switch, and Ding Adele just backed up a little bit on a jab step by Juwan Morgan and he just that was a confident looking three point shot for a guy only shooting 10% from three point range. 
DJ King calling for the ball screen, gets it from Mahmoud. King, the former McDonald's All-American with a drive and a finish. But a really good move by VJ King, a guy who can shoot us, got a good middle game. But you add that in, when he can get to the basket, that was impressive. Pull up by Devontae Green. Pretty good pace here to start this one. Nine minutes in, Louisville started cold. But they're heating up, Indiana on the road up by seven. Adele the drive and the kick, King for three, way short, but Mahmoud there to clean it up. It's so hard to get those when it's an air ball. It's always an advantage to the offense. You're waiting for the ball to hit the rim, but the offense can follow the flight of the ball without having to worry about blocking out. Aljamie Durham, freshman from Lilburn, Georgia. Again, yeah, Archie Miller says he could really trust, plays with a lot of poise, doesn't seem to get rattled, and then of course turns it over right there, something he has done rarely at all just his sixth turnover on the season in about 240 minutes of action and we have a foul to take us to the under 12 media timeout indiana leading by five it is a big big day in the world of sports and we'll tell you all about it when we come back And it is, and the Heisman Trophy presentation comes your way 8 o'clock Eastern time tonight here on ESPN. We are here in Louisville. Of course, there's a Cardinal who is one of the finalists. Lamar Jackson trying to win it for the second time, but it seems, the consensus seems to be, Jay, that it's Baker Mayfield's to lose. Right? Doesn't it have to be Baker Mayfield? I know Lamar Jackson won it last year. He's had a fantastic season, and Bryce Love, another Cardinal, different kind of Cardinal, <laughs> uh, averaged eight yards a game, eight yards per carry, excuse me, eight yards a game wouldn't get you. Eight, <laughs> no, eight yards a carry. Get you to New York, yeah, no. Eight yards a game is, is something <laughs> I might have had. But Baker Mayfield yeah, has to win it. Zach McRoberts into the game and now for Indiana. 6'6", six, six, Redshirt Jr., a walk-on, but a guy who's in the rotation. Guys for loose balls, offensive rebound, hustle plays, that sort of thing. Good help by Deron Davis. A three not there for Sutton, and it will be Indiana ball. So far, Indiana, on the defensive end, has done a really good job with its rotations. And a little full-court pressure here by Louisville. Trying to get this Indiana team to turn the ball over. Which they have done a great job avoiding in their last five games. The Hoosiers committing only about nine turnovers per game in their last five. And really, Louisville trying to extend the defense right now. Boy, a wide open look there, and Newkirk is way off on the three. Shot clock doesn't reset, and Davis in plenty of time. Well, there's one of those winning plays you were just talking about with Zach McRoberts going after the loose ball and immediately turning and finding Davis cutting to the basket in the broken play. The younger brother of former Duke Blue Devil, Josh McRoberts, and how about Duke today? Number one goes down to defeat to the Boston College Eagles, who led most of the game fell behind and then came back in the last three four minutes and won it that well, was a brilliant game plan by jim christian and they made guys like trayvon duvall and wendell carter take perimeter shots and then kai bowman and jerome robinson were fantastic just fantastic so in addition duke loses today as you can see kansas lost at the sprint center in kansas city to Washington. Florida lost twice this week and they've lost three in a row overall and then A&M and Notre Dame going down to defeat as well so when the rankings come out Monday we are going to see a lot of changes. Isn't Villanova the best team you've seen though? I mean Duke is the most talented team yeah. but they're so young. Yeah. Villanova is the best team I've seen. I would agree they were really we saw them against Gonzaga the Jimmy B on Tuesday and they were terrific. Physical and you know, Mikel Bridges, smart. Yeah. Mikel Bridges, Jalen Brunson, they've got guys that are legit stars and they're older players. And you go up against the super talent. Duke has more lottery picks. I mean, they, they've got a, a cadre of lottery picks, but they're all 18 years old. Second foul, uh, two fouls on a couple of Hoosiers right now. Morgan has two and Davis has two. So two very key players, the two starting front court players for Indiana, both on the bench with two fouls. So Justin Smith and Freddie McSwain Jr. both in the game now for Indiana. And Justin Smith has not hit a shot over his last three games. Some of the ball. McRoberts cuts to help out his teammate, looking to get the ball back. McRoberts sandwiched between defenders, gets it to McSwain. Well, and some good defensive pressure on that trip by Louisville forces the Indiana turnover. Indiana needs to make some quicker decisions when traps come at them. 
And if somebody winds up getting trapped like Zach McRoberts was, you have to come to the ball. First appearance of the season. I think this is why you're hearing the ovation for Ryan McMahon, a sharpshooter out of Sarasota, Florida, who missed uh, the first six, seven weeks of the season with a fractured rib. He ran into his teammate, Honest Mahmoud, during the scrimmage, and his rib hit the hip of Mahmoud, which fractured his rib. But McMahon, a guy who can really shoot it. He was knocking down shots in practice like crazy, and some of them were contested. Well, the game, everybody knows what the game plan is on this guy. He made 20 field goals last year. 19 of them were from three-point range. And in the game against Purdue, he hit two big threes that were off out-of-bounds plays, I remember. And, boy, if you're not guarding him, and, and he, he winds up opening things up for other players yeah. because you have to stay with him, and you really can't help off. Second foul on Anas Mahmoud, so he goes to the bench. So Louisville loses their shot blocker. And picking up a foul on a screen. And you want to get him where you're... You want to pick up the fouls where you're doing the most good, and that's near the bucket. Spalding now playing the middle of that 2-3 zone. And it's swaying in the paint for a while. Now he gets out of there. Malik Williams, a freshman from Fort Wayne, Indiana, into the game and now for Louisville. Tough shot off the glass, won't go. And no second opportunity for the Hoosiers. And that's the length of Louisville making that next to impossible to get a decent shot off. McMahon misses his first attempt. Good block out underneath by Aljami Durham to help Newkirk come down with a rebound. Newkirk for three. Got it. Timeout, David Padgett and Louisville as the Hoosiers have extended the lead to 10. Difficult for Indiana to get shots in the half court. But getting it in transition, the nice pass back, and Josh Newkirk, the transfer from Pittsburgh, ready to shoot. Well, it's been a very interesting first month or so of the college basketball season. Some great individual performances. Marvin Bagley III playing outstanding ball for Duke. Not getting as much attention, but playing just as well. Trey Young, Oklahoma, picked up a nice win over USC last night. Jordan Murphy's a double-double machine for the Gophers. Well, Trey Young of Oklahoma's already had over 40 in a game, and Jordan Murphy's been as consistent as any player in the country. And Richard Pitino's got a very good team at Minnesota, and Murphy has been the engine behind it. It has that kind of productivity game after game. You know you can rely on Jordan Murphy every game to score and rebound. Every single game. Is Minnesota the, the toughest threat to a Big Ten championship for Michigan? Nice play there. And finishing it is Spalding. Is Minnesota the most likely team to, to try to knock off Michigan State if they're the presumed favorites in the Big Ten? Yeah, probably. I, I like Minnesota. They're, they're, they're hungry. And it's a, it's a talented team. You know, Nate Mason at the at the guard position does a great job and very well coached. I, I really like their chances, but Michigan State's deeper. And, you know, there's no drop-off for Michigan State when they go to the bench. Yeah. Now, let's see if, if Louisville, who's taken a ton of threes thus far in the game, if they go inside, because the big guys for Indiana are on the bench. And it's been nothing but threes thus far. Now, you know, Ryan McMahon, that's what he does. But the rest of this Louisville team, you know, getting the ball into the paint when they've been more effective, that's got to be part of their game plan going forward. So some foul trouble for Indiana, but some foul trouble for Louisville as well. That is the second on Spalding, and it also puts Indiana into the bonus. So the Hoosiers will be shooting free throws for almost seven minutes. You can see Louisville just one for ten to Jay's point from three-point range, and that is not a strength of the Cardinals. And really, you know, both of Ray Spalding's fouls or at least one of them have not been very intelligent. One for Anas Mahmoud, not very intelligent. And those are two smart players that are sitting on the bench because they made a couple of mistakes picking up a foul where he didn't need to. So if you're a backup big guy in this game, you're probably in the game right now because from a foul perspective, the front courts have played each other to a standstill. For Indiana, Morgan and Davis each have two, and for Louisville, Spalding and Mahmoud each have two. Or you're going to go small yep. and spread it, and there's no worry now in attacking the basket because the two best shot blockers, one of the two best shot blockers in the country is on the bench, and your second best shot blocker, Ray Spalding, who's one of the best shot blockers in the country, is also on the bench. So it should be open season on the rim for Indiana right now. Malik Williams, he can knock down a three, and he does. That's his 22nd field goal attempt this year, and 13 of them 
have come from beyond the arc. You see our 6'11 freshman get inside, but he likes to shoot the ball from outside. Indiana really needs, we've been talking about Louisville getting the ball in the paint. Right now, Indiana needs to tack inside out. Newkirk spinning into the lane, off balance, and enough English to get it to go. You take that move when Mahmoud or Spalding's in the game, and they're going to slap that yeah. into the third row. But with them out of there, I mean, if I were Indiana, there shouldn't be a shot outside the paint unless it touches the paint first. Snyder with a drive, and he'll lay it in, and one of the reasons he got there, Johnson's so worried about McMahon, he went over and helped on McMahon of the quarter. And gave Snyder a clearer path to the basket. A seven-point lead for the Hoosiers. Robert Johnson, boy, he had a good game when we saw him about a week and a half ago against Duke. Didn't he? he played hard. He just didn't shoot the ball well. He's really been struggling shooting the ball from the field the last three games. Hartman for three. And there's McRoberts making another McRoberts kind of play. Newkirk. And Indiana with a couple of good looks from beyond the arc, but can't convert. Louisville in transition. McMahon. They're happy to have him back here in Louisville. Well, to have a guy that can come in, that every time he shoots it, you think it's going in. Newkirk got the switch, lost it, saved it. And Indiana still with time to shoot. Harton in the kick. McRoberts might have gotten away with a walk. Got away with two of them. Yeah. And will get the basket. And David Padgett up and down the sideline, angry, feeling that McRoberts took a couple of steps before he put the ball down. I'm not sure David Padgett moved his feet that well when he was playing. That was pretty impressive. Attack the rim. Adele for three. And a blocking foul on McMahon. Well, let's see what David Padgett was upset about. Let's count the steps. Hartman will get it to McRoberts. He had a pretty good run and head start there. But it goes Indiana's way. Chris Cotter in studio. Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams will join me for the Alfa Romeo halftime report coming up. Got a court storming earlier today in Conti Ford, the number one team in the country, goes down. Yeah, Duke goes down, and it was a great win for Jim Christian in Boston College. But as you see, when you can't allow to have the lights go off while the court storm is going on, security response time will be limited. Total legal court storm. Bad execution by the operations department. Right. But you know what was bad operation? Duke's ball screen defense. You cannot defend ball screens with those two bigs. They were exposed. What about the execution on Jay Will's Christmas sweater? Where do you stand on that? Well, I don't think there'll be any storming of department stores trying to pick that <laughs> up. I don't think it's going to set a uh, fashion trend. But Jay, Jay Will usually wears clothes as well as they can be worn. And he can make a, uh, a $200 suit looks like, look like a $2,000 suit. <laughs> but nobody could do anything with that no, sweater. No. Watch, we'll find out his mother no, knitted no, no. it for him or something. <laughs> and we've offended, the season, offended right? someone. Five-point lead for Indiana over Louisville. Here with the AFC Yum Center. These two programs will meet in Bloomington next year. Oh, McMahon thought Adele was looking at him, but Adele wasn't. And a Louisville turnover. Holiday hoops are back in ESPN with a matchup you'll be at, Jay, next week, Sunday, December the 17th, as North Carolina will be in Knoxville to take on Tennessee, 3 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. A week earlier, and I could have gone to Knoxville and been the head football coach. <laughs> Green for three. Got it! Boy, kind of made something out of not much right there. So he bangs down to three, and the Hoosiers extend the lead. Well, Indiana's been pretty opportunistic when Louisville's made a mistake. And Devontae Green, one of the things I like about him so much, he plays so low with the ball. Adele. Another nice jump shot. Indiana, Indiana has done a good job of protecting the paint, but it's not like Louisville's tried to force it in there. Indiana turnover. 
Louisville shot two free throws in this game thus far. Dell picked up a dribble, finds Schneider. He's in a lot of traffic and will still finish. Well, there's an example of why you want to attack the basket and attack the paint. And in guarding Quentin Snyder, he's a guy that you want to make into a jump shooter. And does a nice job of absorbing the contact from Freddie McSwain and still making that shot. And McSwain was just hugging up on his man a little bit too much up at the elbow. And there was no, no help from the weak side at all. Everybody loaded up onto one side. But a really good drive and good finish by Quentin Snyder. And one of the focal points of... Snyder's offseason, his summer regimen, was to work on his quickness, was to try to be able to straight line drive to the bucket a little bit more. May have paid off for him right there. Well, the say he's improved his speed. You know exactly how you do that unless you just run downhill every day. <laughs> and he never seems to get tired. That's one of the things I've always loved about watching Quentin Snyder at the Ballard High School here in Louisville, where Allen Houston went. Cardinals have made six of their last eight shots, but they're still down by five. Indiana getting a lot done on the offensive glass in this game so far this afternoon. It's been a huge factor. The second shot's kicking them out. Freddie McSwain Jr. getting some minutes because of the foul trouble, and he slams it home. And Louisville just sold out trying to get the steal instead of, you know, if you get caught behind, make him make a move. Like, Freddie McSwain's not a great offensive player. How about that? Williams just picks the ball up off the deck and knocks down a three. His second of the game. And he's done a nice job coming into the game, playing more minutes because of the foul trouble to Ray Spalding and Anas Manu, both with two fouls sitting on the bench, as is Juwan Morgan and Deron Davis for Indiana. I mean, we're seeing the second team front court for each team right now. And Swain wide open, kicks it back out. In and out of the three. Hartman going to get it on the offensive glass. But it bounces free to the Cardinals. Louisville very fortunate. Malik Williams didn't block out and didn't go after the ball. Got to do one or the other. Indiana just out hustling Louisville on the offensive glass. What a swat there by McSwain. Williams again. Got another one. Three threes coming into this game this year. Three made threes in the first half of this one already. Making the most of the opportunity. A really good backdoor cut by Green. Not sure why he threw it back out. Five to shoot. Durham stumbling and called for the travel. Indiana's led by as many as 10 points in the first half. Here come the Cardinals looking for their first lead of the afternoon. Darius Perry, freshman from Powder Springs, Georgia, number two for the Cardinals in the game right now. Louisville very young off the bench. Snyder the drive, saved it. Adele. And Johnson takes it away from him. What a play by Johnson. Green wide open. In and out. And the Cardinals can hold for the final shot of the half. Thought Archie Miller might have wanted a timeout there so he could set up the last shot. And now the last shot given to Louisville. Not a very good decision by Indiana to finish the half. Hard fought first half. Dominated early by Indiana. Louisville knocking down threes late to get back into it. Seven seconds. King. And a rebound by McSwain to bring the first half to a close with Indiana hanging on to lead by one at the end of 20 minutes. A good rivalry. Always fun to see these two programs playing. We got a good one here in Louisville. One point lead for the Hoosiers. Let's head to the studio now for today's halftime report. Here's Chris. What shade of red are you? North or South? Bloomington and Louisville are only 100 miles apart. Their teams are young, their coaches are new. But every single thing about them is painted with decades of tradition. They love their basketball here. Hoosiers and Cardinals. Programs 
powered by the kind of passion that is best expressed in ring. No doubt about it. Two programs with great traditions, great history, and a really close first half. Indiana led it by double digits for a while, but then Louisville, of all things, knocking down threes. That got them back into the game. Yeah, Malik Williams came into the ball game, had went three of three from three-point range. But one thing, Dan, we know for sure is the game's going to change in yeah. the second half because both starting front courts spent most of the first half, if not the entire first half, on the bench. So now with Anas Mahmoud and Ray Spalding back into the game for Louisville, the Cardinals are going to be able to protect the rim much better. Better, and they're going to be able to go inside a little bit more. So this game is going to change. In the first half, Louisville did not get Indiana into the one and one. And that's unusual to go an entire half without having the opportunity to shoot a one and one free throw. For Louisville, Mahmoud played nine minutes, Spalding ten. They both had two fouls. And for Indiana, Morgan played eight, and Davis only seven because they each had two fouls. The long arms of Anas Mahmoud making that steal on the post feed. Dengadel rises up for a three, and that is the first lead of the game for Louisville. Well, the first time that Louisville's really been able to get out in transition off of a steal or getting something off of its defense. And this will be a totally different look for Indiana that they haven't seen since the first several minutes of the ball game to have Mahmoud and Spalding in the game at the same time. Newkirk with 10 points in the first half. Get that foot down. Morgan, deep in the corner, misses the three. And that's not the three-point shot that Indiana wants. It was too quick. No rebounding in place. Now Louisville going to be able to get some rhythm established. Adele turns it over. Then Adele, a guy who put his name into the NBA draft, went and worked out for some teams. Uh, thought about his options, got some feedback, decided to come back for another year of college, and a wise decision. Well, he'll play in the NBA. I think he's got the ability to play. Now, Louisville is 2-3 zone. It'll go to man on certain triggers, like when the ball goes to the high post. It used to be maybe at a certain point in the shot clock. They're man to man right now. Plenty of time to run something. Newkirk on the drive, pull up. And the tip is good for Morgan, getting it done on the offensive glass again. Well, the offensive glass has really hurt Louisville in this game. Not one block out by the Cardinals. That's one thing if you don't block out. But if you don't block out or go after the ball, that's a double whammy. Can't have that. Adele misses the three. Newkirk with a good rebound in traffic. And back come the Hoosiers again. Oh, what a pass. And they've got the lead again. Newkirk finds Morgan. A poor transition defense by Louisville, but a really nice job by Jawan Morgan in running the floor. And that needle was threaded. That was beautiful basketball. Immediate double team on Mahmoud. Spalding is the cutter. Adele's open again, and this time buries it. Well, that's just too easy. The double team, a little late getting there. And then Spalding had the ability to dribble out of it and turn. Sometimes you look at Spalding, you don't think he's that tall because Mahmoud is near him, but Spalding's 6'10". 6'10", and his arms go forever. B.J. King ran into his own man, and Mahmoud gets inside, can't finish, nor can King on the follow. Who's most likely after Adele to be that second option offensively for Louisville? B.J. King, but he's not been aggressive in this game. You have Davis. To hunt your shot. And Davis did a good job being patient, getting Mahmoud in the air. That's really the key, is getting Mahmoud up into the air. But Davis has the, the strength advantage, and he's wider. But Mahmoud goes forever, straight up and down. King the kick, Snyder the three. Spalding runs it down, and it's Louisville ball. Now Josh Newkirk has had a nice game in spots. He's knocked down a few shots. The ability to get into the lane off the dribble. And then that was just a beautiful pass in transition. Nobody from Louisville stopped the ball. And Jawan Morgan doing a really nice job of running the lane and attacking the rim. And Morgan's such a good player. He's physical. He rebounds. He can pass the ball. Snyder picks up his dribble, finds King. 
King from Cleveland with a tough baseline jumper, not close. That's that is a typical shot to spin and then fade away. You know, no chance to get fouled there. And King's got to become more of a driver. He can he can really shoot the ball. But he needs to add more to his game. Another good pass and a foul inside on Malik Williams. That's the first foul committed by either team here in the second half. It's a really strong cut. Well, Morgan's a really good cutter, too. And he's got the ability, I think, to take off. In his last couple of games, he's played extraordinarily well, averaging almost 20 points a game in Big Ten play in those games against Michigan and Iowa. Michigan got a nice win at UCLA today. Yes, they did. Overtime win. And really the Big Ten, especially after the Big Ten ACC challenge with the ACC, I think it was 11 to 3 mm -hmm. for the ACC. I mean, they're, you know, this is an important month for the Big Ten to get some quality non-conference wins to really bolster the case for all of the teams who are in the conference. Well, I think the, the case is closed with regard to the, the ACC. I mean, that's, yes. a, that's a pretty good drubbing. Yes, absolutely. And I look, just we, mean... Yeah, we knew that the Big Ten wasn't what it has been this year, but it's still a good league and has some good, really good teams. Adele... Fouled before the shot, no basket. This is where Adele shows his versatility. The guy that can shoot it and drive it, just taking a matchup down into the low post. He's bigger and stronger and longer than Robert Johnson. They wound up going away from the bucket when he caught it. There's no reason why he can't post up more and be a more efficient scorer in other ways other than just jump shots and transition. Snyder reverses direction, gets it up and in. He's one guy you have to keep out of the lane and limit his penetration. Make him a jump shooter. Tied at 43. Davis banging down low, finishes strong. Boy, that was just strength over length. Going right into Malik Williams and then you had Spalding coming up from the weak side. When we saw Indiana play Duke 10 days ago, Duke won the game, but in the second half, Davis took over for a while. He was scoring over and over again. Didn't knock down his free throws, but he was a lot to handle down low. Spalding knocks down the three. Rudy's Louisville Cardinals knocking down threes all over the place here today. And it's been their big guys. Yeah. Spalding can be a special player. He's got that kind of ability. You see it in glimpses here and there you don't see it as consistently as i'm sure as david padgett would like got a chance here spaulding has them on their feet here in louisville too much trouble for indiana they need to move the ball and then cut it become very predictable Durham tried to shovel it through some traffic and turns it over. Well, Ray Spaulding, we've talked about him being a special player. That 7-4 wingspan, he's athletic. Knocking down a three, Deron Davis can't get out there. And then on the open side, the screen roll. And this is the kind of roll and finish you like to see. You'll get nothing and like it. <laughs> Well, these two schools are close enough to have had a pretty good rivalry over the years, although at times they've gone long stretches without playing each other. Just 100 miles separate the two campuses, Indiana University and the University of Louisville. And again, two great tradition-laden programs. We like seeing schools like this play. We like seeing Hoosier fans here. We like seeing Cardinal fans up at Assembly Hall when they play next year. Oh, the mixed marriage. <laughs> at least I think they're married. <laughs> Might have been an early call. Yeah. <laughs> like Roberts back into the game for the Hoosiers. Turn around, fade away. Another tough shot by Dell, by Adele rather, and the rebound down to Morgan, who is on his way to a big afternoon. Inside, Hartman with a lay-in. Another really nice pass by Josh Newkirk. And both teams shooting a high percentage. Williams w missed that badly. He made three of them in the first half. Tonight, after top ranked boxing wraps up, stay tuned for Sports Center with John Buchagrass and John Anderson. A lot going on, including, of course, the big news out of the baseball world. The New York Yankees have apparently acquired John Carlos Stanton. Once the deal is approved and the physical has been passed, they will put Stanton in the lineup with Judge and Sanchez. 
And whether you want to use the term Bronx Bombers or Murderers Row, that is all back in vogue again right now for the Yankees. While that physical is going on, do you think that Aaron Boone might be outside the door saying, everything looks good <laughs> yeah. to me, Doc? <laughs> That's right. Everything looks That's good, right. Doc. Nothing to see here. Let's go. Keep it moving. <laughs> You see uh, Aaron Boone and Brian Cashman were at the uh, Kentucky game uh, earlier today over the Garden in, in New York. So the Yankees have picked up Stanton. A look at Baker Mayfield's future and LeBron James against Ben Simmons. Now the 76ers have quickly become a very interesting team. You know who else is interesting right now? Louisville Cardinal fans know this. How about the numbers Donovan Mitchell is putting up right now? with the Utah Jazz. He's averaging better than 28 points per game his last five. Well, Utah loved him when they drafted him, and they were right. I mean, they got a guy that's got Russell Westbrook-type ability. Ball still loose. King winds up with it and draws the foul. Sticking with it on the offensive glass. And this was one of the concerns of Archie Miller in Indiana coming into this game, was could they keep Louisville off the offensive glass? Each coach was afraid about the other team getting on the offensive glass. Well, and, and well, they should have been. Neither team is a great defensive rebounding team. You know, Indiana's given up a, a ton of threes this year. They've had a hard time in adequately defending the three-point line. And I think in this game, Louisville's probably taken too many of them, frankly. But Juan Morgan picking up his third foul here. That's a that's a big play in this game, and he's got to be got to be smart down the stretch in the last 13 minutes of regulation. That he doesn't wind up sitting on the bench longer than he needs to. DJ King at the line. His two highest scoring games on the season have come against Louisville's two toughest opponents. He had 17 against Purdue and 14 against Seton Hall. He's got a lot more game that he hasn't shown. I think it's, it's important for a guy like B.J. King just to keep it simple. You know, straight line drives, get to the rim, and knock down open shots. Hartman misses the three, and down to the Cardinals. Snyder trying to go over the top, and a hold inside on Hartman. Hartman had just had that. His, his right arm tucked underneath Malik Williams' left arm, just trying to hold him so that when... Quentin Snyder threw over the top. See how he's got that left arm tucked under? Good call by Mike Eads. And Zach McRoberts had a steal there and left the floor and just had to throw that ball to the other end. You wanted to say left his feet, didn't you? I, I, did, I never want to say that. <laughs> never Adele, again. No. Indiana back with a chance to tie or take the lead. Really, the ball hasn't moved as well as it needs to for Indiana. Johnson, a quiet day so far. Trying to go against all this length. Yeah. He turns around, Dang Adele's guarding him, and then wind up getting switched off. Yeah, DJ King, and he's got a lot of long armed athletes guarding him. Good ball movement, and it will be Johnson, but he misses the three. And the loose ball down to Sutton. Swatted away at the rim by Davis. And that's why you want to keep Deron Davis on the floor and out of foul trouble because he can be a presence inside and erase a mistake. Big day, big night in sports on ESPN following this basketball game. And Vassal Lomachenko and Guillermo Rigando, the WBO junior lightweight title, 9 o'clock tonight, top-ranked boxing here on ESPN. And let's not sleep on the, uh, the MLS championship coming up between Toronto and Seattle, or a rematch of last year's championship won by the Sounders. Toronto FC looking to exact a measure of revenge. Dang Adele to win-bound it for the Cardinals. The team, two teams have combined to miss their last ten shots. Louisville leading by two. And now we're going to foul away from the ball on the inbounds. Justin Smith trying to bump a cutter. And we'll put a forearm out to try to keep the cutter from getting to the basket. Kind of thing that a couple years ago was commonplace. That college basketball has really done a really good job of cleaning up, I think. Do you think the freedom of movement... Uh, emphasis has worked. Oh, yeah, there, well. there's no question. It's worth No question King from the elbow count it That was in rhythm 
B.J. King was one of six in this game going into that shot. But that shows his mid-range ability. But that was that came right in rhythm. His other shots, frankly, did not. When he's in rhythm, he looks really smooth out there. He's he? a good player. Yeah. But I think he has to do more than just be a jump shooter. Because he's capable of so much more. Davis backing down Spalding. Again, just too strong for him. Well, Spalding's got to get that low base. He's so much better being able to come over from the weak side and wipe a shot away. Davis now four for five from the floor. Eight points on the afternoon. Adele is in some trouble. Zach McRoberts, still the ball. Zach McRoberts done a really nice job in this game at both ends of the floor. But here's why Deron Davis needs to touch the ball. You know, he catches it mid post and he's able to back down Ray Spalding and just get right into him and lock him to the floor and shoot over him. You, know, you give a little bit of space to Spalding and he's going to be able to go and knock that away because of his length, his ability to get off the floor. But that strength going against the length has been an interesting contrast. And Davis can just play lower and get into your body and lock you down. Sutton on the drive. And there's yeah. McRoberts yeah. again. Boy, he made four or five terrific plays in this game. Transferred in for Vermont. Brother of Josh McRoberts. Nice. Smart play. Got Spalding in the air and draws another foul. That'll be the third on Ray Spalding. Now, Ray Spalding should have been celebrating that Deron Davis was willing to take that shot. Once you force him into that shot, going toward the baseline side and falling away, let him take it. And then leave the floor second. He just got suckered into that one. And it's going to cost him some playing time. Here comes Mahmoud, and Spalding will be headed to the bench. Only good news is Davis is not a very good free throw shooter. Yet. He only made four of nine in the game against Duke, and he missed four in a row down the stretch in the second half when Indiana was trading punches with Duke. They were in that game for about 35 minutes. Well, that's why Duke didn't want to get the ball out of his hands. Figured make him take a shot over a guy like Wendell Carter, Marvin Bagley. If they foul him, then well, make sure you block out because he's only going to hit one out of two at best. And again, big news of the game just before us here today on ESPN. If you didn't hear about it or didn't see it, Boston College pulling off the upset. They defeat number one Duke, Andy the Blue Devils, their first loss of the season. Boston College hit 15 threes in that ball game to eight for Duke. And Kai Bowman and Jerome Robinson were absolutely spectacular in that game. And you know, even though Michigan State is ranked higher right now, I think Villanova is the best team in the country. They're the best team I've seen. They're one of the seven remaining undefeated. How about Arizona State? What a great start Bobby Hurley's team is off to. They got a big one tomorrow at the Fog against the Jayhawks. You can see that game on ESPN. Arizona State can really score. Trey Holder at 40 in a game earlier this year. You know, Cody Justice, a really good player. They've got Shannon Evans. They've got a really good offensive team. The question is, is their defense going to match their offense? And they're not even at full strength yet. You know, they've got Mickey Mitchell, who's transferred in from Ohio State, that's going to become eligible soon. That, that's a good team. Bobby Hurley's done a really nice job bringing that program along. Newkirk using the screen, misses the three, and Smith misses on the follow. Well, that's one where you just bring it down. This crowd has been quiet because Louisville has not given it anything to celebrate in several possessions. And that's out of bounds. Still to Louisville with eight seconds on the shot clock. Well, it's a, it's oh, a kick ball, so it puts it, it back to yeah, 20. So it yeah. to 20. Yeah. The freshman Perry, Darius Perry, back into the game for the Cardinals. We haven't seen... Uh, a ton of minutes for the freshman, other than Malik Williams, who in the first half made three threes. We haven't seen a lot of pair. We haven't seen much at all of Jordan Wara, the freshman from Buffalo, who's been a real factor for Louisville in the early going this season. Boy, that's a terrific finish there by Snyder. Went right into the body of Jerron Davis and just was able to absorb that contact. He actually created the contact. And finally, the foul call on Perry. David Padgett likes the effort. He says, just you know, tone it down just a little bit. Yeah, it's just a, a discipline issue. Yeah. You know, he did a great job of forcing the offense further out on the floor, but you, you don't want to reach out there. And, you know, all of a sudden you foul. And then you get a little bit of a reset. And 
Snyder out, McMahon back in. He made one of his three threes back in the first half. His return to action today after being out the entire season with a fractured rib. Louisville has not put a lot of fouls on the board in this second half. But they haven't hung a lot of fouls on Indiana either. Levante Green into Davis. He's done some good work in the post here in the second half. Surrounded now, finds the open man, Newkirk. Newkirk keeps it alive and lays it back in. Well, the crowd wants a foul. Thought that Newkirk committed a foul, knocking it away. But that was a heads-up play. Newkirk felt like he missed it as soon as he let it go after that really nice shot fake. And Davis did a great job kicking that ball out. And he showed really good patience in going one-on-one -on -one in the post when he didn't have it, then kicked it out. Spalding bumping with Smith. Left it short. Smith knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with Louisville. Well, Josh Newkirk went after this ball, missed it, and knew that he did, and just went right over and knocked into Ray Spalding. And that's what the crowd, but, you know, the, the referees are saying, hey, that was incidental contact because the ball was loose. I, I thought it looked like Spalding had control of the ball. That's an area you know, we saw in the last two possessions, both when Newkirk took the ball away from him. Yeah, I'm not sure he actually had it, but when, when he took the ball away from him, and then on the offensive possession where Spalding still needs to get stronger. You know, he's a superior athlete, just a, a fantastic athlete with great length, and, and he's really improving year by year. But he needs to get stronger. Newkirk just picked up a foul on the inbounds play, so he goes to the bench. You've got Durham, Green, and Johnson in the backcourt right now for the Hoosiers. McMahon the lob, Mahmoud the finish. A really pretty play. And a very good ball pressure from Perry. His energy and pressure on the ball is really changing the tenor of this game. And Louisville's got it. King trying to go all the way. The Louisville turning defense into offense. Darius Perry with his pressure on the ball, the steal. And then V.J. King with the nice finish off the glass. And Anas Mahmoud, who's been quiet in this game with the alley-oop from Ryan McMahon. Louisville on a run. Time. Van Jay. All right, Chris, thank you. All kinds of things going on everywhere today and tonight. You can see it all on ESPN and ESPN2. we got a close one here, although Louisville has pulled ahead just a little bit now on Indiana, up by five. E.J. King at the line. Misses the free throw. And the question now really is, where does Indiana go for offense? I mean, Louisville has ratcheted up the defense, but where's Indiana going to look to score? Morgan's just come back into the game now for the Hoosiers. We'll see if that helps. If they can get it into Davis, that's a start, but Mahmoud is on him. Might give him a little bit more trouble than Spalding did. Robert Johnson's been very quiet. What a feed. That's a beautiful pass by Devontae Green. And the finish for Morgan to bring the Hoosiers back within three. And what set that up was the ball reversal and the great seal inside by Morgan. Mahmoud banks it home. A little surprise that Honest Mahmoud even hesitated there to go up right away. McMahon thought he had stepped in there to take the charge, but it's called a block. Well, take a look at this pass by Devontae Green off ball reversal, and you give a lot of credit to Jawan Morgan for doing a really good job of ducking in. And V.J. King, you know, you can't sell out there and, and just try to go around your guy. You know, you know he's trying to knock it away, but you can't knock it away from the, the, the corner side because you're giving up a basket. You're better off just staying big and behind and get some help. Davis. And somehow that will bounce in for him to bring the Hoosiers again back within three. How did he power that through the long arms of Mahmoud and Spalding? Yeah. Through a seven-footer and a 6'10 guy. Second time in a row, the Cardinals have run that play to perfection. Now, so worried about the ball instead of the screener. Johnson for three. 
And I think Davis getting called for a foul for Indiana. Well, Ryan McMahon coming off this screen by Anas Mahmood, and there wasn't any rotation over by Josh Newkirk. He's got to meet him higher, or Deron Davis has to recover, and there's not much chance of that happening. It's a really, really well-executed play by Louisville. And, you know, it's asking a lot of Josh Newkirk. Get, get over there and get your body in the way to tag that roll man, especially when they throw it that high. There's no way he's getting up to get that. And Mahmoud at the line out for Louisville. He has scored six of the Cardinals' last eight points. Well, David Padgett, 6'11", the head coach, the interim head coach of the Cardinals. He just paced his way down the bench, but before he did, he was standing right in front of Kenny Klein, the world-renowned sports information director for Louisville. And somebody said to David Padgett, you know, you're blocking people's view. And he said, well, the only guy I'm blocking is Kenny Klein. I don't really care about that. I can do what I got to do. So, <laughs> Kenny Klein in the gray suit, one of the, uh, one of the great guys in the business. Been around a long time here at Louisville and uh, tremendously helpful in, in getting us ready to do our job. It has been for a million years yeah. here. Davis the miss and then a foul. I think it'll be on Mahmoud and it is going over the back of Davis as they battled for that rebound. There's Kenny Klein down there. He's signaling the fouls to David Padgett. Kenny Klein also leads the state of Kentucky in red ties. <laughs> <laughs> never seen the same one twice and never seen anything other than red. Tipped out of bounds by Spaulding. Boy, they do have length on the front line between Spaulding and Mahmoud. And even also Adele, Adele on the wing. Yeah, yeah Adele. Yeah. I mean, where the, the only place they don't have great length is with Quinn Snyder and Ryan McMahon right now on the floor. Tough spot from which to inbound the ball right now for Indiana. Green for three. Where Indiana gets in, they get in some droughts. Difficult to manufacture points against a good defensive team. How about McMahon, who rarely, if ever, takes a shot from inside the line? A little crossover, and he draws the foul. Well, McMahon's got that shot credibility. You, know, you mentioned he's from Sarasota, Florida. You know who called Rick Pitino about McMahon, told him to take a look at him? I do. Richard J. Vitale. Dick Vitale. Yeah. Said, you got to look at this kid. He can really shoot it. Which is why in the Louisville media guy, they ask all the players who their favorite sports TV personality is. This is, this is Dickie V. And it's got to be well, Dickie V. Helped get him here to Louisville. There are, there are a myriad <laughs> of reasons why that should be true. <laughs> here comes Colin Hartman back into the game for IU. Indiana has not made a three in the second half. They are 0 for 9 from beyond the arc here in the second half. As you said, where do they go for Where do they go? I mean, Robert Johnson's been really quiet in this game. And he's another guy. He's, he's small, and the length has bothered him, and the athleticism of the guys he's been matched up with. Archie Miller wants a timeout. Louisville's now up by eight. Back in Louisville, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis. The Cardinals now lead by eight. Happy holidays, everybody. Dang Adele having a nice afternoon for Louisville. Well, Dang Adele was four of 20 from three-point range on the season coming into this game. He's already four of eight in this one. He has 14 points. Knocked down that three after getting a really good screen. Little pin in by Ray Spaulding. Gives a little shake. Shoots it over Zach McRoberts. He hasn't rebounded in this one. Only has one rebound. But Dang Adele is a very talented player. You know, the question coming into this one was who would match up with them? And thus far, for Indiana, not very many have been able to match up with Dang Adele. Ron Davis on the bench out of the timeout for IU. He was on the bench for about 20 seconds before that timeout as well. Now, Indiana turns it over, and they have 
just struggled terribly the last six or seven minutes of the offensive end of the court. Yeah, Indiana hasn't been able to get anything going, and they haven't been able to score off their defense. In the first half, they got a number of offensive rebounds. They are able to score in that fashion. But we talked about the game was going to be different with Mahmoud and Spalding in the ball game, and it has been different. McMahon misses a three after a shot fake, and the back come the Hoosiers. Really, he can't, he can't attack very effectively inside. Deron Davis has been the only one that's had that opportunity. Morgan may try. And again, just too much length by Mahmoud. Mahmoud, four blocked shots per game. And how many like that where he just makes you take a tough shot? That doesn't show up other than a missed shot. He doesn't get credit for anything, but he altered that play. Exactly. Both he and Ray Spalding are, are shot blockers and shot changers, and just their presence is an intimidating factor. McRoberts getting some good minutes today, and he's earned them. He's played very well. He's back into the game now for Indiana. Things run smoothly when he's in the game. He moves the ball. He guards. He goes after the ball. He's just not a scorer. Mahmoud spins and misses with the left hand. the 2-3 zone, which they've spent most of the game in. Newkirk at deep three, gets back his own miss. Where are they long? They've got Adele up at the top of the zone. Smart play. Josh Newkirk did a really smart thing there by just going into the body of Mahmoud. He had the angle. And instead of trying to get it to the rim, he just cut that distance down. It went right into the, the side of Mahmoud. That's his fourth foul. First player in the game to pick up four. And Newkirk, the transfer from Pittsburgh. Fifth year senior is at the line for the Hoosiers as he knocks down the first. Next game for Indiana, they will take on Notre Dame. One week from today in Indianapolis. It's where Notre Dame, Purdue, Butler, and Indiana get together every year. One of the really nice events for the college basketball calendar. The uh, Hoosiers have also already played a couple of league games. They lost at Michigan, and then they beat Iowa. And Notre Dame coming off the loss to Ball State. And Ball State hit that big three to end the ball game and win it. So what, five of the top ten teams in the rankings this week have lost a game. Spalding for three. Yikes. Indiana getting some stops. They're just not scoring any points. Newkirk shovel pass. Morgan to finish. Five-point game. And there is plenty of time in this one. David Padgett wants to talk it over. Because Louisville is letting Indiana, in a way, letting him hang around. So the 32-year-old interim head coach. Uh, in a tough one against Indiana, the Hoosiers, after this nice feed from Newkirk, are back within five. But uh, it's not going to be the mildest December day up in Toronto, but they'll get it done in the MLS Championship. Looking forward to that. Meanwhile, back here in Louisville, Archie Miller's team, they have not made a single three-pointer in the second half after knocking down five in the first half. One of the big reasons why they're on the wrong end of the scoreboard right now. Yeah, for Indiana, I mean, Robert Johnson has not scored in this game. He's got a goose egg in the scoring column. 0 of 6 from the field, 0 of 4 from 3 for Johnson. It's hard to imagine Indiana winning on the road with Johnson not scoring. He's their second leading scorer. He averages about 13 points a game. Snyder spinning and just throws it away. Lucky to find Adele. Five on the shot clock. Adele with a fadeaway. Not there. And a foul is going against Newkirk of Indiana. Must have had a piece of Ray Spalding's arm. His third and the team's tenth. So that'll be two free throws coming. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. No, that's not a foul. That's rebounding. One of two for Spalding. The lead is six. 
And Ron Davis coming back into the game now for the Hoosiers. Ray Spalding now with 10 points, 12 rebounds today. It's his fourth double-double of the season in eight games. And that's with only playing seven or eight minutes in that first half. Yep. Well, both he and Anas Mahmoud spent a lot of time on the bench with those two fouls each. He's got a couple of assists. He's got three blocks in the game as well. McRoberts the drive. Down to Davis and a foul. It was clean up top, but Mahmoud gets called for the foul, and he is out of the game. It did look as clean as it could get up top. I don't know what he got him with. I don't know about that. That's, uh, Davis kind of leaned into him a little bit. He did. That's a, that's a tough one there. Especially when you only weigh a 210 pounds or whatever Mahmoud weighs. He is not a... He is not a substantial guy weight-wise. So Mahmoud is done for the afternoon. Ten points, seven rebounds as he fouls out. And at the line is Davis. Holiday hoops are back, and ESPN's got a great matchup for you next Sunday. It'll be North Carolina in Knoxville to take on Tennessee, 3 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and on the app. Tennessee, a really interesting team this year. A really interesting team. Grant Williams, one of the better undersized big guys in the country. Amazing hands, a really good scorer. And how about this for North Carolina? Kenny Williams is having a great year shooting the ball. He wasn't available last year for their final four run because of an injury. But I don't even remember him making a three his freshman year. Came in with a reputation as a great shooter and just didn't shoot the ball well. And he has matured into one outstanding player. Meanwhile, King turns it over. In both of Louisville's losses this year, they played poorly down the stretch against Purdue and against Seton Hall. Had a chance to win both games. The nine-point margin against Purdue, not totally reflective of the way that game was. And they lost by two against Seton Hall. Don't you get the feeling, I mean, you give credit to Indiana for hanging around, but you get the feeling that Louisville's letting him hang around. And Indiana has not really been able to make any major league plays offensively. Morgan's going to try here against Sutton. Swatted away by Spalding. Boy, he got all of that. Newkirk with the shot clock running down. Tipped, and it should be, and it is Louisville ball. Boy, Ray Spalding, you talk about a shot blocker in a little bit of space. There he is on the weak side, and he just throws that thing back with his right hand. A really nice job by Dwayne Sutton of trying to hold his ground. But Spalding came over and just erased any sort of opportunity for Juwan Morgan to get that ball up and over Sutton. Fourth block for Spalding. Adele to inbound, pressure from the Hoosiers. Just a four-point game, just under two minutes to play. McMahon back into the game for the Cardinals. Oh, Snyder turns it over. Couldn't handle the pass. Well, it's a great job by Josh Newkirk. He didn't let him get the ball from Dang Adele in the backcourt, and then in the front court, he wouldn't let him catch it cleanly. I mean, that, that may go down as an unforced turnover, but Josh Newkirk forced that. That was a really good job by Newkirk. Louisville has not made a field goal in their last eight possessions, and Indiana can draw closer. Morgan underneath with a tough catch, can't finish. Spalding may have gotten a piece of it. He did. That's another block for Ray Spalding, and a basket-saving play. Mahmoud is fouled out, and Spalding's playing like Mahmoud on the defensive end right now. Boy, he really wanted that ball with Davis guarding him. Smart play to set that screen. Snyder can't finish. Morgan down with a rebound. Well, that was smart for Louisville to draw Davis away from the bucket. Newkirk. Davis lost it on the way out, but a foul call on Sutton. That was one of those see if it goes in, no call. It didn't go in foul because there was contact there.
Louisville a little guilty there, not stopping the ball. They let Newkirk get in way too deep and allowed him to make a play. Davis, not a great free throw shooter. But doing better today. He's four for five in this game. Oh, he's, he's had a much better stroke today. But you can see the ball, he rolls it off of his palm instead of getting it into his fingertips. That's something he's going to have to correct going forward. Not sure you can do it right in the middle of the season. McMahon blocked him out. And Louisville can run some clock right now. 53 seconds in regulation. The Cardinals with the ball and a three-point lead. Want to get something going to the basket here. Adele pulls up for a long two. Wow. Not what you're really looking for with a foot on the line, but he knocked it down. Well, that was gutsy. And that's as long a two as you can get. Now McMahon tips it away. Sutton. First game back for Ryan McMahon, a guy known for his shooting, but he makes a steal, one of the biggest plays of the game, and Sutton winds up with the layup. Just really opportunistic after the dang shot on the other end to jump in front, knock that away, and turn defense into offense. That's a that's a backbreaker right there for Indiana. And a game-winning play by Ryan McMahon. And you mentioned McMahon, his first game back from that broken rib. And you expect him to come in and be a three-point shooter, and he winds up making arguably the, the most important defensive play of the game for Louisville. Although those blocks by Spalding pretty good. Yeah. good. 18 seconds left. Louisville ball up by seven. Durham will foul, but the Cardinals are going to get out of here with a win. Indiana led most of the first half, but then the Hoosiers going ice cold from beyond the arc. Did not make a three in the second half. And Louisville did just enough. As you said, they let Indiana hang around for a while. But at the end, at crunch time, they made just enough plays in the last minute of the game. Well, we said at halftime that the second half was going to be a totally different look for Indiana because of the presence of Honest Mahmoud and Ray Spalding in the game. They, they hardly played at all in that first half due to foul trouble. They both had two fouls. I think they played eight and seven minutes, respectively, both, both uh, uh, Mahmoud and Spalding. Then the second half, both of them played extended minutes, especially Spalding. And Spalding had a huge impact defensively in the second half. He just covered up the bucket. Louisville had to have this game. I mean, you could you could feel it in the in practice yesterday, and then it, when we met with David Paget right before the game, that, that Louisville felt like they had to have this. They'll go to six and two on the season. They got Memphis next week here. They also go to Kentucky before. Getting into conference play. Adele has it knocked out of bounds. It's off him, actually, so it'll be Indiana ball. Wouldn't worry, wouldn't, he should just dribble the clock out. Yeah. You know, one, you can get hurt doing something like that at the yeah. end of the game. But, I mean, when you got a, you got a nine-point lead, just dribble the clock out. And they're going to review to see who the ball went out of bounds off of. A nine-point game, 3.9 seconds to go. Hopefully it's a quick one because obviously ultimately it's not going to make a bit of difference. Got to get it right, Dan. <laughs> they go off before he hit his arm or after. <laughs> that's, that's why you want to dribble the clock out. I mean, he got fouled here. It just wasn't called. The referees were out of position, but it went off of Adele last. And it looks like they're going to give it to Indiana. So the Cardinals will make it two wins in a row. They beat Siena with a big second half on Wednesday, and now on their way to a win over Indiana. There'll be four wins in a row for Louisville over Indiana. And Louisville's not played anywhere near their best basketball yet. The Cardinals 71 and the Hoosiers 62. As Louisville goes to 6-2 and, and Indiana falls to 5-5 five and five on the season. Jay Billis, I'm Dan Schulman. We hope you enjoyed the telecast. Thanks for watching from the KFC Yum Center this afternoon. Now time for the MLS Championship game. Let's go to Toronto for the FC and the Sounders.